All right, guys, let's go ahead and wrap this one up right here. Now, what I'm going to do in this outro is kind of break down some of the things that happened in this video. And I'm not really going to go super hardcore into the heat treating process in this video. I'm probably going to break down the stuff that I had to think through with Cable Damascus and part of the Shop Talk Tuesday that's coming up this Tuesday. So I'm not going to go into huge detail on this, which is why I only showed up a little portion of the heat treat process. Um, because I had a, a lot of things that I had to think through when doing this and it would make this outro super long. So we're going to talk about that a little bit in the Shop Talk Tuesday. Now, I do want to make sure that y'all go check out something though. There is a heat treating video by Dennis Tyrell at Tyrell Knifeworks that is just absolutely awesome. If you're wanting to learn just all the right stuff about heat treating, you need to go check out his video. He's able to break down some of the terminology that knife makers use that you might be confused about and some of the processes that a lot of people will probably change what they do a little bit on. Um, he, he's got a lot of good points in this video. So I'm going to leave a link for that in the description below. Go check out that video. You'll be doing yourself a disservice if you don't. And I know he put a lot of work into it. So it just, it, just watch it. It's an interesting video. It's got the right pace. It's not like, you know, someone just droning on in a monotone voice. It's actually good information at a good pace and the right amount of information. So go check it out. Now, when it comes down to what we did in this video, uh, I'm going to focus more on the doing the bevels, doing the you know, maker's mark, the etching, all that stuff. So starting with the bevels, we did our 36 grit belt on the 2x72 to grind in our initial little 45 degree angle to be able to set our cutting edge. So that's important because once we set that cutting edge and we know it's nice and even, all we got to do from there is just bring the bevel up as high as we want. So for me, I planned on doing something about a full flat grind-ish. Uh, there's a hint of a flat at the very top, but there's not much of it. Um, it's pretty much a full flat grind. But whenever you're doing that and you're going to bring your bevel up, you're only going to bring it up to almost the top because as you start going through your belt progressions, that flat that's going across here is going to get even smaller and smaller and smaller until you start hand sanding and then it's going to go away. So all I did was bring my bevel up with a 36 grit belt as high as I wanted it. And then I went into a 120 grit belt and brought that bevel up even higher and got rid of a lot of the grinding lines from the 36 grit. And then I went to a 400 grit belt after that and was able to finish out my flats as much as I wanted them to be going into hand sanding. Now, before I went into hand sanding, I went ahead and did my maker's mark. Now, that maker's mark process is something that I didn't hit on very much in this video as well, because I've got a video that's gonna be coming out that's dedicated to my maker's mark process. I am modifying the machine that I use right now to make it more dedicated for maker's marks, because it's a battery charger right now and I'm gonna make it to where it has all the stuff that you would typically have for making a maker's mark or etching a maker's mark into a knife. So I'm gonna have a video come out that's just dedicated to that so y'all will see that in the future. Now, we do the maker's mark and then we go into hand sanding because the last thing you wanna do is get a nice finish on here and then do your maker's mark and accidentally mess something up and not be able to, you know, not so much not be able to, but waste the hand sanding time and you got to go back and hand sand again so we do our maker's mark and then we start hand sanding and even though i ended at a 400 grit belt on the 2x72 i'm still going to go back down to something like a 220 grit on the hand sanding process because the whole entire time on the 2x72 we've been grinding this way and now we need to start sanding this way so we need to be able to get any lines that are left out so what I do is go down to a 220 grit, then a 320 grit, a 400 grit, and then a 600 grit. And that's where I stopped on the hand sanding process for this was 600 grit. So we did that and then we cleaned it and went into our ferric chloride. Now for the ferric chloride process, it was five minutes in the ferric chloride, pull it out, clean it with 1500 grit sandpaper, and then 
put it back in the ferric chloride for 10 minutes, pull it out, clean it again with the 1500 grit sandpaper, and then back in the ferric chloride for 15 minutes, pull it out, and then at that time, I didn't use sandpaper, I just used the Windex and my index finger and cleaned everything off. So just whatever grit comes from your, your uh, fingerprints, cleaned everything off and it gave me this result. So again, this is what we're looking like. There you go. That pattern again is just absolutely awesome. I love the way this is turning out. Just, it, it can't be any cooler than that. Well, it probably could, but for me, this is the craziest thing that I've been able to do pattern wise, other than that, the copper knife that I did, that Kumai build that I did. The pattern on that is probably one of my favorite things that I will ever see and ever do, ever, forever. Um, but this is a very close second. Uh, really happy about this. I'm interested to see what y'all think, so let me know in the comment section. Guys, what do y'all think? If y'all like this, give me a thumbs up on the video. Uh, if y'all would, make sure that y'all share this. Make sure that y'all subscribe. Guys, if you haven't yet, just, you know, leave a comment down in the comment section. Tell me what you think about this. So, thanks for coming by. Thanks for spending your time with me. Y'all have an amazing day. Y'all stay safe out there. I'll catch y'all next time.